Hey, uh, I'm here to pick up a basic tablet oh. from Every Armor. You're the, you're merchant uh, Gabriel, right? Yes, yes, it's me, correct. I, I'm uh, I'm here to pick up one of the black basic tablets, but I thought I thought maybe you could help me uh, with some tips and tricks to weather it. I'm gonna play a battle hardened soldier, and I want the mm. costume to to look the part. You yeah. and be a part of telling the story. I see. Of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah. Awesome. Let me let me awesome, pick them man. up. Awesome. It would be cool to have something that you know. That looks so the tablet have been to war, that been I've been fighting with it, but also you know not just blood everywhere, some some wear and tear maybe. Yeah. A bit of stains, you know. Of course, this this white is too bright out of the box, but we can definitely do something, and it's actually very easy, and everyone can do it with a little bit of uh, skill and uh, patience. I don't have a workshop at home. How can I go about it? Sometimes you can also use like house tools, like maybe oh. also like a kitchen knife or this kind of metal white brush. It would be better, yeah, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. you can have sandpaper like this. Ah, yeah, yeah that's I mean, easy to get. Every hardware yeah. store, and it's gonna be very cheap. So it's something that it is basically open to everyone. Uh, the first things that we wanna go first is with a little bit of weathering of the texture, mm -hmm. because then when we're gonna use our dyeing and paintings, it's gonna stay better and it's gonna affect the fabric the way it would have been affected by the real use with a, a bit of the white brush which is a more aggressive tool for it yeah. it depends on what kind of fabric you're working on but you can use it both in the same direction of the fair fabric or against it to have a more aggressive result yeah. and of course it is a matter of balance and pressure and this is something that is really easy to understand the very moment you are doing it even though in my looks ineffective sometimes in the moment we're gonna use the the dye and the painting, it's gonna be very much highlighted. For someone like me, just going to the to the local ho hobby shop and get some acrylic paint would be the way to go. Yeah. But is that is that really the best way? There are many ways. It depends on the results that we want. And you can get like like a nebulizer like this, fill it with water and a little bit of acrylic paint, and then go over the edges, the white part. And again, do not go too hard because if it becomes too much brownish, then it's really unrealistic. Better to do a, a light layer and then let it dry, wait to see what exactly. happens. And then if you need yeah. more, you can do more. And uh, you actually said the magic words, let it dry. When this is soaked, it's gonna be of a different color, most likely darker than mm -hmm. when it's gonna be dry. Let it dry and then if necessary, go with a different techniques or with another layer of the same mm -hmm. techniques. Like sponge can have several ways and different ways of um, using techniques like acrylic. Lay a very, very thin drop of like, let's say brown, maybe a brown mixed with white or with a cream color. Clean your brush on a piece of paper, your sponge. It is basically a dry brush technique. Mm -hmm. now, now I see what you meant with the with the color highlighting where the, where the fabric had been uh, torn and worn. It already looks like, like somebody had been using this. With practice came better results, but it's, it's a very, very simple job. If you're, like, if you're gonna play a palace guard, for example, it would be nice to have the clean look. I guess it's easier weathering than unweathering it. That's why it is nice to play with different techniques to obtain different results. Yeah. Because even if you're playing the palace guard, like, or the king guards, Yes, you're gonna be nice and shiny, but you're still gonna be different looking from out of the box. Even if you are uh, the king guards, you're gonna have used that, that gambeson on pretty much anyway. Yeah. So even <laughs> if you clean it, you're not gonna have a new one every no. time you're gonna stand your guard. So All right. even All for right. sandpaper. Of course, we need to be careful on stitching because machine stitched is pretty easy to, to rip. If you are a little bit skilled and maybe you know about a little bit about hand stitching, then you can go harder, rip some, some stitching and then have some hand stitching to cover it. Of course, it's gonna be different so, looking. Yeah, so you can, you can make sure it won't uh, tear itself up while still getting the uh, cutting looks. If you are using an armor, well, of course, armor are heavy and made out of metal, so they will tear apart all the fabric equipment that is underneath them. So put on your armor and see, okay, this is gonna touch here and here. So these are the areas that are most likely gonna be more consumed by the armor. Think about when you do the wear and tear, how the rest of the costume affects. 
especially metal part. This is a very uh, exposed area, so that will have a lot exactly. of This is not very exposed, so this should probably not be that warm. Contextualized. Yeah, well, we focused a lot on the white, which I see like it's a light color, so it's mm -hmm. easy to get some darker in it. But what about the black? On black, we need to play a little bit more with light reflection. The actual weathering with the hardware brush, it is a little bit more effective. But if you can get your hands on dust pigment, the one like that artists can use for having their own mixer color, mm -hmm. but you need to be careful with the color difference. If you go with a too bright dust, then it's gonna look really unrealistic. Unless the, your character has just left uh, uh, a marble cave. So using a little bit of dust, put the dust in a piece of cloth, maybe two or three layers, start with more layers and then see if not enough dust is going through it, then you remove a layer. Mm -hmm. But better be careful in this process. Even if it's just a, a pigment, it is very aggressive on fabric. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very hard to remove. Pour some, some dust, some pigment through the fabric mm -hmm. uh, sack over the fabric. And then with a brush or with a sponge, you kind of distribute it more evenly or the way that is more realistic that mm -hmm. you're looking for. Color-wise, there's not so much that you can do. But it's very easy to get tricked by the black a double check, a tribal check to see once it's dried, once it's settled, to see how it looks. It's not that difficult to actually weather your costumes if no. that's something you want, but it's a process that you have to be mindful of when you're doing it because you can make mistakes that are difficult to, to salvage. Remember to, uh, to take a, a, a bird's eye perspective of yes. the situation once in a while and be like, okay, where's the costume now? Put it on a mannequin or someone else or on yourself in front of a mirror and have a wider look of it. You just need sandpaper and acrylic paint for the basics, but yes. you can also go with pigment old or steel brush or old yeah. brushes. Even That's the so old toothbrush, they are there working really That's good. so awesome. I feel so ready to get out <laughs> to all this uh, campaign starting here in spring. So ready to get out and fight. Well, do it yourself on a new yeah. one and so do enjoy your journey. Thank you.